This is Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Since 1996, Casa Juan Diego in Pilsen has been a place where a community has found a variety of resources to guide its young people with the motto of literacy, culture, and peace. Today we have Lisette Gonzalez and Father Brendan Curran to talk about their work. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be Let's here. start off by talking about you and uh, who you are and how that brought you to Casa Juan Diego. Uh, Liz, right? Yes. Um, so I've been at Casa Juan Diego for the past um, four years, going on four years. And I actually started um, from, I was in my, my mother's womb. I actually was baptized by uh, Father Chuck um, at Who's Father Chuck? Oh, it's, he was previous pastor there? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I did all my sacraments there. And um, I actually, I became more attached when I confirmed myself 11 years ago at Casa Juan Diego. Um, I did my confirmation there with uh, Ricardo Marines, mm -hmm. and um, after that, it was an experience. It was it was a life changing experience. Um, I wanted to continue to, to to go to Casa Juan Diego, so I started um, volunteering on and off. Um, and even though I was not living in a neighborhood anymore, I was living in the far south of Chicago by 79th. I would take you know the drive or mm -hmm. public transportation. Right. Um, I was uh, then offered um, a job there. Uh, and um, I took it, and you know, and I and I absolutely love um, what I do there. You know, working with the youth, and uh, mainly with my with eighth graders and, and, and to, through high school. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love what I do, and, and I don't even call it a job anymore. You know? Really, I do not call it a job. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a job. Well, so. the, that's that's a great thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm very I'm happy. I'm pleased with 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 the whole is there, and you know, very proud of of, of what not what I'm doing, but what they are taking from me and, and then putting that they're able to put it into work. That, mm -hmm. That's their work. So I've okay. been there for the past four years. That's awesome. Uh, that's great. Father uh, Curran? Well, it's a, a delight to hear Liz's story because mm -hmm. in many ways it reflects why I chose to be at St. Pius. I'm a Dominican, mm -hmm. uh, a member of that religious order within the Catholic Church. Uh, I'm at St. Pius 12 years, and I came to St. Pius because it's not an ordinary parish. It's what do you mean by that? Well, it really is a parish that is committed to the life and part of the lifeblood of a whole community, a cultural aspect of the community, religious aspect of the community, and some of the challenges and conflicts in the community. And it's a parish that seems to put itself in the center of all that. Okay. Uh, well. You brought up all these <laughs> these words and uh, ideas that I want to get into a little more, but um, and we will. But I want to get into you. Mm -hmm. uh, you said uh, you were <laughs> basically part of this organization since the <coughs> womb. Yes. But what within your family? Because not everybody that necessarily goes through an experience like yours right. decides to say, "Well, I want to make this a greater part of my life. I want to make it my work." But like you said, it's not work mm -hmm. anymore. What within your family? Uh, sow those seeds of service through right. through nonprofit work. Um, well, my family has always been very active at San Pius, mm -hmm. um, and but even though you know they, I mean, and I guess they planted that seed of service and being mm -hmm. part of the parish and being part of the community and making the church, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that has always been in my family mm -hmm. from you know since we, we you know we were young, me and my and my sibling. Um, but uh, obviously, as you start going through um, as a teenager. You go through certain experiences, um. right? <laughs> Just like any other teenager does. Uh -huh. And you feel that need to kind of belong somewhere mm. and be part of something. So mm. as I was, you know, going through that phase, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old, you know, I definitely found that, 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 um, that community and that place of belonging at Casa Juan Diego. Okay. Um, so that definitely is a big part and having that, you know, being, having someone in my life that definitely kind of not kind of pushed it and like mm -hmm. motivated me mm -hmm. I you know that definitely played also a part because I want to do the same for those you know who were who you know who are in my shoes now right so I really want to play that role you know and and what better place than Pilsen which is you know home for me even though I don't live any in Pilsen anymore but it's home for me you probably spend more hours there than you do I, at yeah, home. I, do. I actually uh -oh. just go home to like sleep and that's it <laughs> because I'm always in Pilsen yeah um you know and and my family they're always in Pilsen you know on the weekends you know we go to uh, we go to mass Sunday and things like that so um we're always in Pilsen I grew up in Pilsen mm. even though my house is not necessarily 
in Pilsen. Okay. Uh, Father Curran, what, what in your own uh, background uh, or who in your background sowed those seeds and made you think, um, I want to serve, want to make it my life to serve? Well, I, I really think similar to Liz, seeing different mm -hmm. people modeling mm -hmm. uh, a commitment to service, mm -hmm. to thinking that um, if you think that you can see a church where you can make a, a commitment to or make a difference in, why not step up and do it yourself? I mean, that was always a thing I saw with relatives, with mm -hmm. friends. It was always a spirit of the people around me that I was uh, kind of fortunate to be a part of that atmosphere of good family support and good friendships with people who really thought out of the box, mm -hmm. asked the big questions, and always uh, challenged me, right. why not you too? Why not you too? Awesome. Now, Casa Juan Diego, it's almost 20 years old. Uh, why and what were the beginnings of this organization? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, from the beginning, um, the parents in the parish uh, felt that there were some great problems. One of the significant problems had to do with uh, the violence in the streets, mm -hmm. violence in the homes, and um, specifically problems of work schedule, uh, realities in the family of not having a safe place after school mm. that can deal with pressures on the street, in the home, and some of the problems some of the schools weren't dealing with. They said, why don't we do something? That's how the parish decided to take a risk and open up the doors of Casa Juan Diego. So it was those parents concerned. Uh, you talked about schedule. It's parents um, working long hours or working two jobs a lot of mm -hmm. times, right? And uh, they, they asked for this, the parents did, or the parents saw the need and said, this is something we need to do? Well, parents were constantly complaining, honestly, they were complaining. about not knowing enough about their children's mm -hmm. uh, academic progress, mm -hmm. what was going on in school, weren't seeing progress reports or report cards, a lot of distance between staff and schools and parents, and parents who honestly didn't know our academic system. That's a whole other area of challenges that they've dealt with as immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, and they felt this was a safe place, safe environment. Let's try something. So we literally did. We just have a three flat right in front of the church that thankfully the Dominicans, our, our community, has mm -hmm. belonged to and mm -hmm. opened up its doors to say, use the space, see what happens from there. That's how Casa Juan Diego started. So you, in, in some sense, the, the very beginning was also to help bridge some of that, that gap between what was going on in the school uh, and what was, uh, what was going on, how there was, a, I guess, a disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. um, b between the school and the home, right? Um, now, during those first uh, few years, um, that was the primary mission, I would say. Uh, is that still your mission? Honestly, the youth center began in a very simple response, not knowing what this endeavor really meant. Mm -hmm. Honestly, getting the kids off the street where the parents knew that there was going to be an adult mentor there mm -hmm. that they trusted in through other programs the parish has had where mentors and those type of pr uh, people were involved. Uh, and then we got into doing some significant analysis and, he analysis and hearing the, the youth mm -hmm. uh, either not talk at all about school, not having a, an idea about how to do their homework, a lot of real open questions of real problems and crisis that they were dealing with, they opened us up to on inviting them in after school. Wow. Now, uh, you grew up in Pilsen, right? Yes. For, for, yeah. Um, did you see, a, a, as, as you were growing up, did you see a lot of those issues that uh, Father Curran is talking about? And uh, what did you think when, when you saw that? Did you see it in your own family, that disconnect and that lack of communication and not having a safe place to be after class? Um, I think that it's as a, well, growing up, and not just in Pilsen, but mm -hmm. all around in, in, in Chicago, it's not just Pilsen right. having this issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was in Pilsen and outside of Pilsen, um, I saw this issue. I couldn't walk to school or t take the bus to school. It's I was having to see someone get beat up or getting, you know, in some, some sort of trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing, pa uh, parents are very busy with the schedule. And, and, and you know, even uh, growing up, sometimes my mom had to work, you know, late or my dad had to work late, whereas it was hard for them to kind of make it to school or things like that. Also mm -hmm. being um, first generation, right, in the United States, it's, it's a very different upbringing than what my parents had. 
um, in Mexico, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's very different. So it's 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 a lot of uh, it's not miscommunication. It's just that there's not enough time. There's not enough time sometimes in, in, in the home to have these sort of you know times with students and and the teachers and the principals and everyone else in the community. Um, so I did see I, I I did see it and I and I still see it. You know, mm -hmm. I still see it. it. It's something that happens um, all the time where I see, you know, students, um, you know, they, they are, there's no one home, right? So they know that if they get a bad t a grade in their in their math class, then, you know, they're not, there's not going to be a follow-up on that because they, right. you know, and not because they don't want it or, you know, they're not looking for Or something. they don't care. Right. It's mm -hmm. because, unfortunately, parents have to go out there to bring some money to put some food on the table. Mm. You know, they have to do it. So it kind of causes that those relationships to kind of, you know, disappear or, or kind of, you know. Not even happen. Right. Right. So. So uh, this organization was born responding to that and you still see those issues uh, to respond to some of that. And yet you, you, the Dominican order said, open this up and see what happens. And how, how did the organization uh, start responding to things? Did it happen during that first year, those first few years, or is it, uh, has it been a, an evolving mission uh, at Casa Juan Diego? In, in many ways, um, it's been uh, developing. Mm -hmm. um, with every group of students that come through the center mm -hmm. from their first days, kindergarten, first grade, to mm -hmm. moving through to the experiences of high school, we've seen shifts and changes of their challenges they're dealing with. It, over those years, it's not been the same. Uh, an important thing that we were able to do was to recognize that there were friends, there were people who care about us having, trusting that St. Pius can do this, mm -hmm. having a safe space and environment to really attempt a significant response to these issues. Mm -hmm. So thankfully to foundations, thankfully to individual families, these people believed in us to say, give it a shot. Let's invest in this. Let's make mm -hmm. sure that we have a building that is freestanding for a space that they need. Having a, a computer center, mm -hmm. having staff, full-time mm -hmm. staff, not just a volunteer. When we first thought it was just a volunteer helping us out, trying to have a conversation and see where that went from there. And we knew immediately this requires a lot more sophistication. Right, so it was one, one volunteer when it first started? This honestly started through um, uh, parents uh, wanting to have some space mm -hmm. after school, and we invited to have a person who is doing other ministry on staff to try to be there, kind of partly uh, subsidized, you know, stipend it, right. to be with that group mm -hmm. and begin to develop some stepping stones as to how to build uh, a youth environment, a f sophisticated youth after school program. Right. So uh, you started off in, uh, in front of St. Pius, uh, mm -hmm. And then, um, but now you have a building, right? Mm -hmm. Separate for this uh, organization. Um, and you mentioned a computer lab um, or a computer center. Tell me what that building is like and when um, youth or uh, families uh, are curious about what you have in there, um, uh, what you're offering, uh, what they see. Right. Um, so right now, the um, our building our building has classrooms. You know, mm -hmm. where they're classroom spaces, where kids are um, are placed in a group based off their grade. So that way, they have an instructor that is able to help them. You know, based on whatever third grades third graders are doing, fourth mm -hmm. graders are doing, um, and it is a um, they come in and, and and there's there's spaces for them to read which mm -hmm. is very important for us. You know, we do have a literacy-based program, right. which means that one of our main focuses is having, you know, a library and having books on, on, on site mm -hmm. where they, you know, if they could pick up a book and, you know, and, and sit down and read, have that space. They also mm -hmm. have a space where they could do homework, mm -hmm. right? We have, uh, and we have our volunteers who are there to help, you know, to help manage and, and every kid gets that one-on-one. -on -one. You okay. know, it's important that our kids get those one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. um, our computer labs, we also have spaces where they could play board games and futbolito, which they love, mm -hmm. and, you know, Foursquare. And, you know, just as they can, you know, be, have, home, have homework help, they could also have some recreational activities. Okay, so tell me more about uh, these volunteers for homework. Do uh, you get them from local schools or people just from the church come in and sign up and say, I want to volunteer to help these kids, uh, how does that work? Right, we have partnerships with universities, okay. which they send um, students that are, you know, that are interested in education. Mm -hmm. um, so they send volunteers and we work with, with the professors closely so that, you know, they're able to send us volunteers and, you know, we could have that support from, from students. 
Um, so they, they come in and, and, they're, and they help out throughout the, the after school program um, in, in the classroom so students could, you know, have that option of that one on one. So if they're having trouble in algebra, you know, there's someone there that could guide them, you know, mm -hmm. and that's actually interested in education in some sort of form of education, um, to, you know, for, the, for, for them. So these are uh, local universities you collaborate yes. with? Mm -hmm. Yes, UIC, DePaul. Um, we have we have students from there come and and help and volunteer. These are primarily students interested in education or any students. Yes, um, mm -hmm. they're <coughs> they're interested in education um, or they have they're taking some sort of course about you know for example I know one of the courses like the Latino experience mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. come and see um, you know which is a predominantly class taken by Latinos mm -hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> they identify with mm -hmm. and they come and, and you know they I think they 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 and they know that they're aware that they have to come you know and do some sort of service and that's what you know they're interested in you know mm -hmm. doing some service giving back to their community so you know they're they're sent to Casa Juan Diego. Okay uh, she mentioned some of the partnerships you have uh, with uh, local universities who else do you work with to, to carry out your work uh, Father um, you mentioned some nonprofits but are there other organizations within Pilsen and maybe even outside of Pilsen that you've worked with that uh, help uh, help these young people see a different a, a different life? Mm -hmm. so, so we have a fortunate situation where in Pilsen right now um, there's a, a wonderful uh, networking that's active and alive among those who offer some alternatives or support for youth mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And what we, um, thanks to the staff largely at our youth center, uh, as well as uh, other staffs from other local organizations, they come together regularly and recognize how they can uh, share some of their resourcing to strengthen how our youth have a better impact. So we have um, a number of different uh, youth center uh, opportunities, mm -hmm. um, activities, special events, these type of things. You know, one thing I should mention is that someone might think that at a parish like uh, St. Pius or at a mm -hmm. Catholic parish, these must be all Catholic school kids, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. A real important thing is that 85% of these kids are from public schools. Uh, okay. Very, wow. very few of our, our kids are coming from Catholic schools. Somewhat, that was the intent of the beginning of this youth center. We, we already okay. have a freestanding Catholic mm -hmm. school of our own. That is one important outreach for the parish. But we have a huge population that we need to serve. Um, we're over 2,000 families. Only a few hundred families mm -hmm. get served by a Catholic school. So the right. youth center started from the very beginning to really reach the kids who are not, are not families we're seeing through the door at our own school. Okay, uh, and all these kids come to the center, but they don't just stay there. And you serve kids from what ages again? From six years to like up to like 17, 18. 17, 18? Yeah, That's high school That's a huge <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. age range from children to essentially uh, young adults. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you serve each age group particularly? <laughs> I, mean, I know you offer probably similar services for all of them, but like specific to each age group, what do you have like for the young kids, for the older elementary school kids, for the middle school mm -hmm. kids and the high school kids? So how do you, how uh, do you do well that? You actually, as you walk <laughs> into all the classrooms, you mm -hmm. see, you could actually tell what, what, what age group is in that classroom. Okay. Uh, but do you have like different, uh, do you plan the same activities for everybody or keep them separate in their, those activities? Um, well, there are separate activities mm -hmm. because, you know, they, they are at a different um, ages, they have different interests, mm -hmm. right? So we need to be able to, you know, we're flexible and have access to those sort of things, you know, where we, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have students do some activities together because, you know, we understand that the, the ages that obviously will matter in, in the activity. But there is also times where we do form, you know, one activity for all because mm -hmm. we need to be able to form community within them. Mm -hmm. You know, from the youngest ones to the oldest ones, where the youngest ones, you know, could look up to the oldest ones right. and, and form as a little brother, little, you know, big brother <laughs> sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have activities where we uh, where we have all of them together because it's important for us for them to, you know, understand that it's important to share right. and form community. But we also offer the opportunity for them to, to be separate. And we do it through the some other activities that would just be specifically for some age group or for some group. Um, and you see it in the classroom, you know, the books that we have for, for high school students are not are different right. than the books yeah. for the younger. Yes. Right. 
right obviously that right yeah. and things mm -hmm. like that so we definitely try to offer those different opportunities for you know the high schoolers to hang out with the high schoolers and the six and the six-year-olds to hang mm -hmm. out with the six-year-olds but we also try to have that space where we all come together and you know we celebrate our community you know mm -hmm. because that's what we try to we try to focus on us as a community we're a community right here so let's take care of one another and be and we're one at the end of the day we're one so if, if this person if this six-year-old falls we're all fall <laughs> okay. falling you know right. so we try to do that so um i'm also thinking to they obviously they have to go out on different field trips but do they go on field trips and uh, where do they go yeah actually we do <laughs> our last one was a a, a pumpkin patch mm -hmm. and uh the youngest ones and the oldest ones <laughs> went <laughs> and you would think yeah. like well how is a high school student or you know a eighth or ninth grade going <laughs> to have fun you'd be surprised <laughs> they do you know really? they do have fun and and you know and it's really up to like the each instructor makes it you know, relate and some sort of way for, you know, uh, form it so they could engage mm -hmm. and participate, you know, if they serve as like, well, okay, you're going to be, we're going to do a buddy system here and you're going to kind of, mm -hmm. I'm going to have you supervise, you know, help the, the, the younger ones, you know, so we try to definitely, you know, work those things out. So both everybody engages and participates, you know, and it's a positive and, and wonderful experience for them, okay. you know. Where else do you take, uh, all of them or I guess all of them on field trips, they don't always go together, but wh right. what other places do you go? Um, sometimes the older, uh, some of the older ones will probably have like team building activities to like, mm -hmm. you know, or some sort of like events out at a park for like older mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, or things or like to different, um, they see different parts of a museum. So mm -hmm. if we're going to a museum, there's things in there that will definitely be going, that there will be, you know, engaging for the older ones that, you know, for the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So we try to really inform and know, like if we're going somewhere, what, what are some of the options that the older kids have and some of the options that the younger kids have? So museums, um, local events, mm -hmm. um, you know, even things that, uh, for going to the movies, that's, you know, you might mm -hmm. think like, well, how, that's a field trip, but, you know, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a moment where we all share outside of Casa Juan Diego. Okay. So we're not just a community inside Casa Juan Diego, but outside as well as going to the movies as a community. Mm -hmm. Let's all go to the movies together. So. Okay. Uh, this is all community, but, um, I'm curious about the stories of, um, or a particular story about an individual or a family that you saw that they came through Casa Juan Diego and you just saw this huge impact, maybe a transformation in the children or the entire family uh, that maybe wouldn't have happened without uh, Casa Juan Diego. Could you tell me about one of those, please? So um, there's so many stories. One of them is Liz's own story um, <laughs> as one of the uh, proud youth who came through the uh, youth center from the community. Um, I'm just thinking of someone who immediately comes to, to, mm -hmm. to to my heart because right. Juan Carlos Vargas is uh, someone who came to the youth center. They live in challenging situation on their neighborhood and their block. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of gang problems there, uh, been dealing with a lot of issues. Um, and Juan Carlos got himself involved thanks to his parents looking mm -hmm. and being assertive for where they can be protected and make sure their, their children are safe. Got involved in the youth center and he got very active, not just being a participant of the youth center, but began to volunteer and stay with the center because it was making an impact on him in his life. It opened him up to grow, mm -hmm. to share things that he was dealing and struggling with. Right. And now he, we are very proud of him. He's a person who graduated just this last year from Xavier University, Cincinnati, one of five Latinos in the graduating class. One of five. Coming from our neighborhood, our programs of, of St. Pius. Now he is in a full year of service in Guyana, um, wow. serving a full year of service of volunteer work uh, and constantly communicating. He's using the you know, social, social media, media <laughs> network to keep us all posted. I, I get messages from him. He gives me a big update. Here's the house. Here's what we're doing with. Here's how we're helping orphans. It's, a, it's amazing, a proud story. Wow, that sounds amazing. Now, how old was he when he entered and what uh, you don't have to get into his very personal issues, but what were some of the, I guess, issues he was dealing with? Well, number one, the, the parents are, mm -hmm. are new immigrants. Okay. okay. So when he was young, he was dealing with what so many, like Liz, and so many mm -hmm. uh, are dealing with. Your families are trying to accommodate themselves, understand mm -hmm. everything it is to be here. 
Um, at the same time, they were dealing with some very violent situations around them on their block, in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. at their school. I mean, they'd constantly go fights. And, and the and family honestly mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. Okay. Um, and they came to us. That's how we got started. What do we do with our kids so that our kids are not suffering like those kids are, that we know down the block, that we're afraid to even have our kids out on? We mm -hmm. can't have our kids in sheltered, you know? Wow. That's how the family looked for help. Mm -hmm. the, and, and they were always, you know, back in Mexico, they were always active in the church mm -hmm. uh, as parents, right. uh, you know, as kids, right. active in the church. And they brought that spirit and thought that might be a connector that might help them and their family. Wow. And now that he's giving you these updates, um, <laughs> what besides uh, the day-to-day -day things does he tell you that make you think, wow, we made a huge difference here? I think, Besides just seeing him, obviously. Well, I mm -hmm. think he's made an, a very interesting choice. He's mm -hmm. always, first of all, volunteered when he's home from college. So Xavier University, Cincinnati, it's a long way from Chicago. <laughs> Every time he's home, he's looking to volunteer. He didn't just come to Mass. He says, how can I help? And he's asserting himself. He'll go around and he'll ask people. He knows the flow of life at the parish. He'll jump right in, volunteer, and participate in a events. Mm -hmm. The other thing is he's been very transparent about his own journey. Mm -hmm. He shares his story in the community both with the kids uh, in our programs, but also in church. And he's asked the community to partner with him on his journey. That's a pretty bold thing to do. That's not normal. Right. <laughs> okay. So he has shared with them. He's asked people to be committed to staying in touch with him as he continues to grow in his own journey. Wow. Pretty That's, amazing. That is pretty amazing. Have you run into a similar story like that? Yeah, and I actually, w I've been able to work with his, young, with his youngest brother, Juan okay. Carlos' youngest brother. Um, What's his name? Alejandro, Alejandro okay. Vargas, mm -hmm. and um, you know the same thing. And, and there's a there's a lot of uh, it's a, it's kind of like a cycle mm -hmm. where we're creating these leaders. And you know, I was mm -hmm. once there as a participant, you mm -hmm. know, in confirmation. You know, I was that once once upon a time that teenager mm -hmm. that would snap the ne my neck, you know, to my instructor and be like, I'm not going to do this. We're running out of time, so tell us as quickly as you right. can what um, what what you've seen in him yeah. in this young boy. Yeah, Alejandro Vargas. I mean, he. he it's the same it's the same thing you know encountering issues in school and, and on his blog and you know with his peers and mm -hmm. all that and through the the process of him being in in the academic program and in confirmation he definitely made a change whereas he is more committed and motivated to participate great great so much uh, thank you so much for coming out thank and you. sharing these thank stories you. appreciate it Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of can tv if your nonprofit organization would like to use can tv call 312 Seven three eight one four zero zero, and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at eight thirty p.m. on Can TV Twenty One. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.